seconds is going to be enough to get him back across the line as he is certainly coming on the farther half of the circuit right now. Let's see what he's able to do. Coming down into the hairpin right now. So he's going to bring his way around. Heavy braking zone there up the hill a little bit as he goes. Only 20 seconds left on the clock. I don't think he's going to have enough time to be able to complete this one here as he is going to come around the last couple of quarters. Corners, 12 seconds on the clock. It's a race against the clock here for Cerniak. If he is going to be able to get anything, yeah, he's going to bring that car a little bit too narrow there coming through the last corner. Two seconds, one second. Looks like Eric is not going to be able to get that final time in as indeed the car vanishes from existence before he is able to cross over the line. But that does mean that it's Lerman. Gross and Nave, your top three. Daniel Lerman in the number 32, then Reem Gross in the number 44. Near Nave starts off in third position, followed by Yaval Merrick. Then as we move back, it's Shalva Kichvili and Nadav Yaron in the number 22. Watch that red machine in sixth place. Dorian Tabachnik lines up in P7. Then it's Arnon Levi, Amir Mishfulam, and Michael Sherling will be in the row behind them, rounding out your top 10. Yasiri Baba, then Mark Zubarak will be 11th and 12th as we move back into the next row. It's Yossi Gabe and Rant Sony in the number 20 machine. Now we move over into the GT4 categories with Hage Ferran and Yaron, uh, Yaron Levi. Uh, 15th and 16th overall. That'll be 1st and 2nd in GT4. Eric Zerniak will be in 3rd. Then it's Av uh, Avivi Cohen in P4 in GT4. Gilad Hes uh, Heska and then uh, Yuda Hod Ben Yosef will be the next in that GT4 category. 20th overall. Asaf Yaron will be 21st followed by Offer Mazuz. And then as we move back it looks like uh, uh, last in that GT4 category to set a time. Bertie Galili. Then Tal Stern did did not set a time, nor did uh, Ben Sorek or Aiden Scher. Uh, and that will round out your field. Doesn't look like Stern, Sorek, or Scher are going to be gritting up. I think there's maybe some league admins here. But as you take a look right now, thankfully for us, one of the beauties of sim racing is we do get to have a short pace lap around here, which means it's not going to take too long for these BMWs to bring their way back around. But the one problem that they're going to have to deal with is the fact that it is only 68 degrees Fahrenheit out on the track. That's relatively chilly by racing standards, so I would not be surprised to see a lot of weaving here out of these BMWs trying to warm up those tires as much as possible, trying to generate a lot of heat there as they go. That's about uh, 20 degrees Celsius, by the way. Thank you uh, to our director uh, uh, for giving us uh, that graphic because I do not have that conversion down in my head. Also, uh, important to talk about here, thanks to the new iRacing rain updates, no rain is forecast here in this session. That doesn't mean we won't have it a little bit later. Again, the big news for the iRacing 2024 Season 2 build is the fact that it can have a little bit of precipitation on the track. And as they like to say, rain is the great equalizer in racing. But the only equalizer we have to worry about right now is who is going to get down into turn one the quickest, who is going to get on the binders the best, and who is going to make this Algarve circuit their own here today. Portimao, a beautiful racing venue as we take a look from above. You can see the rolling hills here at this point that this track is cut into absolutely spectacular racing blind corners as a result of that elevation change it really doesn't get better than this when you talk about premier european racing venues well, right now there, you can see that weaving going on through the whole field. Everybody working to get those tires up to temperature, trying to be able to build as much as possible here. They come down now into the sequences, bringing down into turn 13. This is that hairpin. That's a good overtaking opportunity. Coming out of turn 11, it's not the longest of straightaways, but it's just enough to maybe try to get that little bit of an advantage to play if you are brave enough. 
especially in these GT3, GT4 machines, you can really have some fun chucking these cars through the corner, particularly through those lower speed corners that relies exclusively on mechanical grip. Past the shortcut there in turn 15, sort of long apex right-hander that brings it around. Split start for the field. The GT4s will start a little bit farther back. Here as they go, Daniel Lerman, Reem Gross right now, your front row. That's the BMW branded and the, red, uh, the blue branded car. As there goes the green, and we are racing here in Portugal. It's a brilliant getaway there for Lerman. He's going to be able to hold on to this lead. It's a little bit of a scramble from behind. Marika Nave trying to be able to fight for that third place position. Down to the inside goes Marek, and he is not going to be able to hold on to it. As we take a look back in the GT4 field here at this point, it's Farron that has been able to hold on to the lead position, and it looks like uh, Cerniak has been able to get a little bit of an advantage as well, putting Aaron Levi down, and we've got a car spun out and around, and that's Shalba Kajvili here at this point in the pink machine, but look at this, a fight for the lead, here comes Reem Gross, looking to the outside, going down into turn five, tries to go for the crossover, but well defended there by Daniel Lerman, he's having absolutely none of it, they need to be a little bit careful though, Yuval Merrick and Nir Nave in third and fourth, lurking there behind in that block Black BMW, there you see the number 25, and they're no longer lurking, folks. Let's call them a part of this battle as they run down the hill right now, working their way into turn eight. A little bit of a poke to the outside for Reem Gross. He's trying to put pressure here to the back of Daniel Lerman, but it doesn't look like it's working. Now, out of turn 11, we talked about this area. This could be a potential overtake, and there is the look from Reem Gross. He wanted that move not quite close enough to make it work. The 32 of Lerman leaves the door open a little bit, coming down into turn 14 as we ride on board with the number 44 of Reem Gross. Gross takes the car a little bit wider to the outside there, carrying a little bit more momentum, and now down through Galp, the last corner on the track. We see the same thing again there from Gross, letting the car slide out wider, reducing the friction on those tires, and I wonder if that's a little bit of a strategy for him to try to carry more momentum as now he takes a look around the outside, going down into turn one, not able to get it done. Again, well defended there by Lerman, but Merrick now in the midst of this battle, he's going to take a look to the outside of turn three. Little bit of a check up there. Door open for Lerman. Gross unable to fly on through it. These top four getting a breakaway here from Dorian Tabachnik in the number 69 machine as they continue out. Little bit of a gap starting to grow between Gross and Merrick, but I don't think that's going to last for too long as indeed as they dive down into turn five, everything bunches up yet again. Gross, once again, extending that line on the circuit as much as he can, trying to see if he can just get a little bit more speed to get by that number 32, but it doesn't seem to be playing out quite, quite yet. As we take a look there on the bottom right of your screen, it's Mark Zubarev in the number 30 who has gained the most positions on the day. He is up four. Bertie Galili up three down in the GT4 category. Tabachnik up two. Tassoni up two. And Cerniak up one. But it is the... Uh, uh, Reem Gross right now that is looking to go up just one position, and that is on Daniel Lerman. Big move down to the inside of turn 13, almost muscling his way on through. He's got it done. Both of them go off the track here, and it looks like there that Merrick wanted to have a little bit of the piece of the action. He's going to try to roll speed going through turn 14, and that opens up the door for Nir Nave, who's now going to be down to the inside of turn 15. That is uh, Merrick trying to hold tough, but it's not going to happen. Meanwhile, up at the front of the field, Reem uh, Reem Gross, Daniel Lerman, all the way down to the inside. Shades of the Dragon move at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway here for Reem Gross, trying to defend that as much as possible. Here comes Lerman to the outside. You can carry more speed around that outside line. Maybe a little bit of bang in there as they come through turn one. Here they hold it out, and it's Gross still able to hold on to the lead. A little bit of a crossover there for Daniel Lerman. He's not going to be able to get it done here at this point, but welcome to the battle, Dorian Tabachnik. One, two, three, four, five. They all run here as they go down into the heavy braking zone. Four, turn five. Look, contact there between Gross and Lerman. Lerman just a little bit too later on the brakes there at that point. 
Near Nave now into this battle as well for P3 as we take a look there at that graphic. Everybody separated in the top five by only 1.8 seconds. Here as they work their way through the corner, Nave trying to get a little bit of a better run off of turn eight. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get anything to play here as they flick their way through the sweeper of turn nine and line themselves up for the double apex right-hander of 10 and 11. Looks like here, Nave just looking, looking, looking. And this is really allowing Reem Gross to, to scamper off into the distance. You can see that blue number 44 up in front of them. He's got a one second gap on the rest of these GT3 leaders. That's the biggest gap we've seen here today in the opening five minutes of this race. Ooh. A little bit off the line there. It looked like through turn 14 for Daniel Lerman. I'm not sure if he necessarily wanted to get that run or if uh, he just got pushed out a little bit wide and the car wouldn't hold up underneath him. But one way or the other, he's going to have to try to keep everything together here as he runs right now. Single file order, no big move down to the inside coming through turn one, but good on the binders there was near Nave. Let's take a look a little bit farther back in the field. This is a close battle between Mark Zubarev and Michael Sherling. Uh, that is, excuse me, this is uh, uh, Sian Baba and Amir Mashulam. Mashulam in the triple seven chasing down uh, Tissian Baba. Whoa, with a wiggle in the number uh, five coming off of the line. Amir Shulam says, thank you very much. I will take that position away. Now he sets his sights on Mark Zubarev and Michael Sherling. That's the white and the purple machine that you see up in front of them. Again, it looks like turn five here is the real flashpoint, and that is Baba looking like he's losing positions. Ram Sony uh, trying to get involved in this at well in that blue and red machine there at that point. Keep our focus here on Baba. Oh, to Sony putting all kinds of pressure to the back looking for the crossover here coming out of turn eight he's going to be on the offline coming down into turn nine again that's that fast sweeper to the left and again sony's going to have to back out of it not really able to get that play but oh crossover move coming into turn 10 to sony didn't quite have it underneath him to make that and look at that sweeping around the outside that is going to be the triple seven of amir mishulam getting around mark zubarev and that was into turn 10 and 11. Good play there by Mishulam. He is on the move here at this point. Now, he lost a couple of positions at the beginning of the race, so he is back where he started right now. But clearly, that 777 has a lot of speed underneath him, and he is going to be able to push up ahead and try to be able to make a little bit more hay. Now, crucial to remember as we follow this battle here at this point, top 10 inverted. And let's give a little bit of a love here to uh, Haggai Ferron, uh, your leader in the GT4 category. Uh, Ferron has led since the drop of the green flag in this black and orange number 95 BMW M4 GT3, or GT4 rather. So he has led since the downbeat. Chasing him right now is Eric Cerniak. Now, Cerniak's looking like he's losing a little bit of pace there. Three-tenths of a second off on that last lap. The gap expanding up to 1.3 seconds. And that's, frankly, really the story throughout this GT4 field, where we've seen a lot of good battles going on up in GT3. GT4 is pretty well spread out. Everybody kind of looking like they're running their own race with uh, uh, eight minutes gone here in this first of two 20-minute heat races that we will see. Right now, though, as we take another look up at the front of the field, little bit of a look there for Yuval Merrick. Trying to see if he can get a little bit of a run on near Nave in that number 38, that teal and red. Very distinctive livery there on that number 38 machine. Number 25 as well, not hard to, uh, to miss with that sort of matte black on it. And he's being chased here by Dorian Tabachnik in P5. Everybody's still running very, very close from second to fifth, but Reem Gross has checked out at the front of this GT4 order. There you can see a great camera shot by our director to give you an idea of what that running is. This Gross is now nearly two seconds up at the front of this field. Uh, uh, gap coming down a little bit through the first couple of corners, but oh, big wiggle there for near Nave. He is going to have to try to gather that car back up under him as Yuval Marek 
Now going to find himself under pressure here from Dorian Tabachnik. Farther back down in the field. Here comes the number 17. That's Yossi Gabay and ran to Sony trying to go at it a little bit. To Sony in the blue and red machine looking to the outside. Going down into turn three. Not able to get the crossover done here at this point. So Yossi Gabay going to be able to hold on to that P12 position for the moment. That's Shalva Kachvili in P14. Side by side farther up in the field. Amir Mishulam continuing to make moves. Michael Sherling has having none of it and going around the outside of the track to be able to hold on to that position. But I wonder if that's a slowdown penalty as the 200 of Sherling has to back out of it. And indeed, that position will go up to Amir Mishulam. And now it looks like they've got a little bit more side-by-side -side further back in the field. Tyson Baba and Mark Zubarev side-by-side uh, -side coming out of the corner. The loser out of that looks to be uh, Baba as he is going to fall back a little bit. Let's take a look at a replay here farther back in the field and that is off from Azuz. A little bit too much speed coming through the right hander. The rear end of that BMW M4 GT4 just kind of breaking away from him there at that point. Big look down to the inside for the 94 there. Chava Kachvili. I'm sure he is, uh, Kachvili, uh, uh, feeling a little bit on the back foot. Remember, that was the car that we saw spun through the 1 2 3 sequence at the beginning of the race. And Kachvili wants to try to gain back up here when I'm sure he's aiming for at this point, folks, is P10. He wants to get back to Mark Zubarev and get the benefit of that invert for race two. But here at this point, as we watch Zubarev and Baba, this battle is not over yet. Good defensive line for the 030 of Zubarev to hold him off, but Baba's going to take a look down to the inside of turn three. Contact between the two. Zubarev loses the rear end of the car, able to gather it back up underneath them and keep on going. Maybe a little bit over eager there for uh, Tyson Baba but he'll be able to hold on to that good little battle back down in the GT4 category this is for P4 at the moment Yudahod Ben Yosef and Aviv Cohen battling out right now for that P4 position there you can see by those graphics Cohen starting to gather up a little bit more starting to gain a little bit of speed here as he comes on Aviv seeing if he's going to have a look. I don't think he's quite close enough to be able to get the run into turn one. But again, as we've seen, if you can carry good momentum through turn one, the flick of turn two, you can maybe have a little bit of a move here into turn three. Doesn't look like it's going to pay out right now for, uh, uh, for Cohen, but he'll hold on to it at the moment. Oh, big wiggle there behind for uh, Cohen as he tries to hold everything underneath him at the moment. Down the hill to turn five. Just continuing to put pressure here. And with just under eight minutes left to go, I've got to say, this can be a good strategy here, folks. We haven't seen that many errors out of these iRacing uh, Israel League drivers. But uh, certainly, uh, putting that pressure behind can allow for a mistake to maybe be played through here at this point. And I think that's exactly what Aviv is trying to do to Ben Yosef, just trying to see if he can maybe elicit a little bit of an error. There you see the live timing, the revs, the the the, the uh, uh, kilometers per hour on your screen, and the speed that these GT4 machines are starting to pull out here at this point. Seven minutes, 15 seconds left to go on the clock. Oh, big wiggle there for Ben Yosef. Tried to get onto the binders going into turn 13 while on the curbing on the outside, and that just unsettled the rear end of that blue BMW just enough to give a little bit of a wiggle there as Yudahod Ben Yosef trying to be able to hold off Aviv Cohen. And, and looking ahead of him, uh, uh, Galad Hesika, uh, Heskia, rather, in P3, that's that white BMW up the road. He's not too terribly far in front of him. So maybe Cohen here in the past, in the last six and a half minutes, if he's able to get a good enough run, he could be able to close that down and make things play a little bit more. Oh, big one ride there for Ben Yosef. And is that going to open up an opportunity here for Aviv Cohen? It looks like Cohen is fastest through the first sector. I think he's getting held up a little bit through sector two and sector three there, as you see on your map there. Uh, uh, 1.3 seconds slower and 35 thousandths of a second slower on the last lap through Sector 2 and Sector 3. And then compare that to the run here on Heskia uh, for Ben Yosef. He is faster outright 
Uh, and that gap coming down to about nine tenths of a second, this is going to be a three way battle before everything is said and done. By the way, that GT3 battle we were following has died down a little bit. This is really the best battle on the track at the moment. If anything crazy pops off in GT3, we'll bring your attention to it. But let's keep our eyes here because this is the battle for the final podium position in the GT4 class right now. Glad Heskia leading over Ben Yosef, Aviv Cohen right behind them. Let's see here. Ben Yosef may want to try to be a little bit more aggressive with this number four BMW. Try to make a big move like this down to the inside of turn 13. Try to get that to run. Almost contact there between the two compatriots. Let's see if they are able to get anything to play as Heskey is going to try to hold the inside line. Ben Yosef wants to carry more momentum around the outside through turn 14. Ben Yosef bringing all of the momentum to the outside of the track. Aviv Cohen has his choice of lines here at this point. With Wiggle there for Cohen, and that is going to be a uh, wiggle for Ben Yosef. Cohen able to take advantage and carry momentum. Ben Yosef now on the back foot, and now the question has got to be, can Aviv Cohen move his way up into a podium-clenching position with a move here on Heskia? Down into turn one. No, but there's a big move from Ben Yosef from behind. He jumps over the curbing. Thankfully, no contact there. Big error for Yuda Hod Ben Yosef there at that point. That just did not look like it was a fully cooked maneuver. I think maybe was a little bit too late on the brakes, and that could have been a situation where he had to jump out of the way to make sure that he didn't cause any contact with the drivers in front of him. Now, four minutes, 15 seconds on the clock. Here comes Cohen down to the inside of turn five. Over to the inside of Heskia. Heskia's got no response, and move Aviv Cohen. Hup! into the podium positions for GT4. Brilliant stuff for that predominantly black and purple number 34. Brilliant. Let's take a look on board. He got a good run here coming out of turn four. Carried the momentum well. And folks, look how far back he was. He just recognized that he had it and licked the stamp and sent it down into turn five. Good stuff there for Aviv Cohen, and that will hopefully gain him a podium position, but it doesn't look like that number four of Galad Heskey is going to go away anytime soon. Kind of taking some, I don't want to say opportunistic, but experimental lines. They are coming out of turn 11 and into turn 12, just trying to poke and prod here on the back of Cohen. Again, seeing if he can force a little bit of an error on these drivers in front. And if we look at that, they are, are well, you know, Yernin Levi starting to grow in here a little bit. He could make this a little bit of a battle. Yuda Hud Ben Yosef needs to try to close in on these two in front right now because Yernin Levi in that number 303 that you see on your screen, he's getting chased down here. He looks like he could be in trouble. Uh, does Ben Yosef in these final, let's call it two laps on the circuit, he could be in a little bit of trouble here, and he could find himself in a position where he's going to have to play defense. Indeed, Levi actually took a little bit of a look there, going down into the right-hand hairpin uh, of turn three. Yeah, Ben Yosef not out of the woods yet. We thought this was almost a guaranteed P3. Let's take a look a little farther up in the field. This is the triple seven of Amir Mashulam. Too much speed. Oh, what a big coming together from behind. That was Tyson Baba that uh, looked like he got into the side of him there at that point, and that certainly caused a little bit of consternation through the field. Uh, the only driver that that really helped was uh, uh, Shalva Ketchvili, uh, who looked like he was able to gain a couple of positions as a result of it. Uh, uh, Ketch Vili is now going to bring his way up into P10 overall, which is crucial, folks. That is the top place for the invert in race two. Remember, we said for Shalva that was the position that they wanted to be in. We just took a look there at Reem Gross, your leader up in the GT3 class, and Hage Fer uh, Farron, your leader here in the GT4 class. Both of them have some pretty substantial gaps, uh, although Farron's is a lot larger here at this point. Four seconds compared to the 1.7 that Reem Gross has over Daniel Lerman. But right now, as we watch this battle still playing out, uh, Heskia and Levi. These, uh, are, uh, this is the battle for uh, sensibly P3 in that GT4 category with Cohen leading Heskia, leading Ben Yosef, beating, leading 
Levi. Oh, as it looks like Amir Mashulam has had another problem. He's going to take a toe back down into pit lane. Bad run there for him, unfortunately. But let's keep our eyes here. 48 seconds on the clock. It looks like Reem Gross just crossed over the start-finish line. So that means that uh, it will be one lap to go for your GT3 leaders. And for these GT4 drivers, it'll be one lap to go when they cross over the start-finish line. Is there not hasn't really been a whole lot of lapping here on this circuit. The, the Portimao circuit, just long enough battle here for P9, though. Uh, Kittish Beely looking like he's not content with P10. He wanted to put Mark Zubarev down a position, and Zubarev in that 0-3-0, the multicolor machine, is now going to find himself down the order. It's Kittish Beely in good stead. And of course, as soon as I said there hasn't really been a whole lot of lapping, well, I lied. That was uh, Asaf Yaron going down one spot here at this point. Reem Gross moving his way up forward and putting that GT4 driver a lap down. So this is your leader coming down through the corners right now. The double apex of 10 and 11. Now down the hill into the flick of turn 12. Going to bring their way along through. Now this could be a little bit interesting. That's that battle with Ben Yosef and Neuron Levi right in front of him. How is your leader going to want to play this out? Because remember, it's only two seconds to get back to the lead. Now they are coming down through turn 14 right now and in their way to turn 15. So I'm not sure how exactly they're going to want to play this will your leader of Reem Gross and remember if they lose a lap here at this point they've got to do a whole other circuit of this port of mouth track looks like that's of no concern to Reem Gross Gross crosses the start finish line he will take the victor the victory here at this point so that is an early uh, mark in the win column for Reem Gross although it does look like those GT4 drivers are going to have to go back around and complete once again as indeed, yes, they are. So that's a leading pack of GT4. They've got another battle to be able to play out here. Gay Farron is going to come across the line to be able to claim the victory in the GT4 class if things hold on the way they are. And it looks like here at this point that Eric Cerniak are still in good position. P5, by the way, looks like they are still racing here in class. So that's going to be uh, Yuda Ben Yosef. And I think think uh, you're on Levi yes you're on Levi is categorized as a lap down so that's what that is there as we try to break down a little bit of the post-mortem here in race number one but Farron right now bringing that uh, number 95 black and orange machine down through the last couple of corners here down through the left hander uh, excuse me, the right-hander of turn 14. Again, a 4.8, nearly five-second gap at the front of this field. To say this has been dominant for Farron, I think, is a little bit of an understatement here at this point. So going to bring that car out of the final corner, climb the hill here at this point, and the number 95 of Agay Farron will cross over the line to take victory in the GT4 class. Cerniak will be P2, Aviv Cohen P3. The battle's still on here for P4 right now. As Cohen's going to have to try to hold on here at the moment. Heskia and Ben Yosef holding on again here in Levi did get lapped, so they crossed over the finish line, and there they come across the line. Farron, Cerniak, Cohen on down. But just like that, folks, we're going to get ourselves gridded up here and ready for race number two. And as promised, this is going to be a uh, uh, reverse grid. So there as we take a look there, Reem Gross with that dominant performance coming off of the back track there. Lerman, Nave, your podium positions. Tabachnik in P5. Uh, Shalva Kichvili, I think, is one to really watch out for in P9. They're going to have to work their way forward. As it looks like, actually, as I take a look right now, there is your uh, uh, the rest of the field. Uh, Baba and Sassoni getting into some problems there. Mashulam, as we said, having to take that toe back down into pit lane. Tal Stern, I didn't share, did not grid up for race number one. Okay, Theron, uh, and Cerniak, and Cohen, your top five here uh, in that. The great battle with Heskia, Hudbin Yosef, and Levi uh, to round out them there. At that point, you run Levi, unfortunately, going the lap down there. Brody Galili off from Zeus and Benny Sorek. All of them were categorized uh, 
off the pace there, Benny Sorak not finishing out. But drivers are headed out here at this point as we get re-gridded. Now this short pace lap, well, it's not super short if, if we're completely honest. It only cuts out maybe a third of the track here at this point. But it looks like it's going to be Levi, Sterling, Yaron, Tabachnik, Marek, Nave, then Lerman, and Gross. I think actually it was an invert of the top eight here at this point, so not the top ten. That does change that categorization a little bit more and may explain why, for example, Shava Kejvili was on uh, such a push there to continue to go his way up through the field. There is your winner from the first race, Reem Gross, who will be starting an eighth place it'll be fascinating to see if gross is able to maybe gain a little bit of position gain his way up forward and see what he's able to do again there as we mentioned your pole sitter unknown levi going to be leading this field around track conditions haven't really changed all that much it's only two degrees fahrenheit warmer only a single degree celsius warmer but, as is one of the often characteristics here, look at that, 12 kilometers per hour, 13 kilometers per hour of wind coming out of the southwest. That is something that can affect these GT3 cars a little bit. We are right on the coast here at Portimao, and so that can certainly buffet these cars a little bit and throw them for a loop if you're not careful. You've really got to be on it and make sure that you are on these cars the whole time. Uh, uh, it, it is something that uh, is very common here at Portimao. As I said, we're right on the coast. For those that are familiar of the iRacing service, think of it a little bit more, think of it a little bit of akin to uh, what you see at Phillip Island down in uh, Australia. Very, very common to see those heavy winds. But as drivers work their way through turn 15, here they come, bringing their way along right now, waiting for the iRacing pace car to pull off down into pit lane. There is the fade, and there goes the green. Our own Levi getting a big jump on this field. Yeah, it's a big, big jump there for Levi. Battle for P2. Sherling and Yaron almost coming to blows there. Coming into turn two. Looking for the run up the inside. Dorian Tabachnik says, thank you very much. I'll take one, but he loses it. And that is going to be him and Yaron. And that is Tabachnik all the way off to the outside into the tire barriers there around the outside. Meanwhile, back at the GT4 category, uh, uh, Hage Ferran looks like he is able to hold on to it. The battle still commencing on there between the four and the 34. That's Heskey and Cohen trying to sort themselves out. These are the same protagonists that you saw in that battle for the top three in the uh, uh, the previous race here at this point. There's a big look down to the inside there, trying to hold themselves out a little bit more. Maybe some contact there, but no, they're going to be able to hold themselves out and hold into good position. Heskia, Cohen, Levi. Well, we've got to check back up into the GT3 category. Reem Gross already making up three positions here at this point, but the big mover, Daniel Lerman, is now that could be four here for Reem Gross looking into the inside of the 25 of Yuval Merrick trying to be able to make that position. That blue number 44 looking this way, looking that way as they plunge down the hill into the kink of turn 12, trying to see if he's got any move as he goes into turn 13 down to the inside of the 25, tries to get the run off at the corner. They're still going to be side by side, but preferred line goes over to the 25 there of Merrick. Great defense there for that black machine. Absolutely brilliant stuff. And Catch Vinley just kind of looking on in the background here as they run down into turn 14. Big wide run off in front for Daniel Lerman. That doesn't look like it's going to pay well out for him. Is now here comes Gross with what will be the outside of turn one. Again, that can be a good passing opportunity here as they plunge down the hill. A little bit earlier on the binders for the 44 of Reem Gross. Gross looks for the over under down through turn two. He's got the preferred line in to turn three he's got the position move gross up four spots in two p4 here as they run right now trying to sort themselves out let's take a look at the replay here coming down into the corner oh another spin there for the number 17 yossi gabe just carried too much speed down in there and look at this arnon levi almost looking like he is holding up the likes of michael Scherling and daniel lerman up in front of him 
Not exactly the best run there at that point. You want to try to be able to get by. And I've got to think here, if I'm Sherling, especially if I am Daniel Lerman, he wants to try to get a move as quickly as possible. But look at this side by side with Levi and Sherling three wide. Coming down into the corner, contact with the top two. That's going to send them spinning around. Reem Gross picks up the pieces, says thank you very much. And that is what you've got to be careful about coming down through the corner as now they try to sort themselves out a little bit more. And the 39, Vernon Levi falling all the way down through. I've got to put the blame there on Levi. It looked like he carried just a little bit too much speed coming into turn 10, and that unsettled the car. You saw it kind of wiggling there as it went on through, but as we take a look a little farther back in the field, Scherling and Nadav Yaron now going side by side down through turn 15. Let's see what either two of them have to be able to say about this, and it looks like uh, Arnon Levi trying to gather the slipstream off as Daniel Lerman up at the front of the field is now able to set the fastest lap of the race. Duck and diving here as they go down to the inside almost contact again my goodness gracious there we take a look at your biggest movers of the race Daniel Lerman Reem Gross up six positions Kedishvili up five Mark Zubarev up five as is Tyson Baba oh that's a little bit of a squeeze for our known Levi and it doesn't work out Levi falls back down to 11th place. We'll have to gather everything back up underneath them. Tyson Baba right now trying to take a look at the back of Mark Zubarev as we take a look down into the GT4 categories. And this is going to be the number 38 machine trying to get their way back up through. That's near Nave, who's clearly had an issue a little earlier on in the race. But let's take a look here coming down into turn one, the 31 machine just loses it of their own accord. That's Eric Zernak. Oh, Zerniak having a big hit with the inside retaining wall there. That Armco probably did some damage to the right side of that BMW. And there, indeed, as you saw on your screen, a little droopiness on that right side. But right now, here, we follow the battle with Mark Zubarev in the 030, that uh, purple white and teal machine chased by the traditional BMW livery here of Tyson Baba as they try to push their way up and on through. Already five minutes down in this race, folks, when you've got this kind of good action, the time absolutely flies by you, let me tell you. As they work their way onto the main straightaway right now, Tyson Baba, Mark Zubarev. Again, this is the battle that we follow for P5 in GT3. But look at this train behind them. Sherling, Tassoni, Yaron, Mishulam. Everybody kind of poking out in line there at that point, but they'll come back into single file order as they come down through turn one. One, and two provides no breaks in the action there at that point. Let's see what they're able to do. Amir Mishulam looking pretty aggressive on the back of Nadav Yaron. I'm not seeing an overtake coming anytime soon here at this point. Let's wait and see what happens here as they jump onto the binders down into turn number five. Let's take a look farther back down in the GT4 order. This is off for Mazus and Aviv Cohen. Mazus in that 4-2-2, trying to see if he can get a line down to the inside of Cohen, but just not anything to play for. Wasn't able to carry enough momentum going down into the corner, and it doesn't look like that's going to play itself out here for the moment. But side by side they go. That's the 305 of Yaron Levi and Gilad Heskia trying to force, them, force themselves out a little bit more. Yaron Levi with a great move to be able to make that play and move that number 303 up into second position in the GT4 running order. I'm very impressed here by that 303 of Levi. He was right in the thick of it in that battle for P4, P3 in the previous race, and he's right now sitting in a very pretty P2. Meanwhile, battle for three in GT3, Yuval Merrick and Shalva Kitschvili really on the fight here at this point. I said Kitschvili was one to watch out for after regaining those positions and trying to get himself in the position, Kitajili way to the outside there, trying to go down into turn one, looking for the crossover on Merrick, but Merrick shuts the door. No room at the end. He is not going to be able to hold that out, and Kitajili will hold on here at this point. Let's see what they're able to get doing here as they bring their way back up and around over the hill of turn four, getting ready to plunge down once again into turn five. I don't think this is going to be close enough for Kitajili. 
Let's see. Less than a car length separating the two as they come out of turn five right at the moment. They're going to try to push their way up the hill right now. Let's see what they can do. Nothing into turn 10 and 11, but Kishvili really just continuing to put the pressure here on the back of Yuval Merrick. I like what I'm seeing here out of Shalva in that pink number 94. Just constant pressure, trying to poke and prod this way and that way to see if there's any room to be gained. Looking here at this point, gap growing a little bit more. Shalva not quite able to close it down here as they run. But looking closer and closer, still about half this race left to go. Just about 11 and a half minutes left here in this second race here from the Portimao circuit. Battle starting to brew up the front of the field between Daniel Lerman and Reem Gross, but we'll keep that we'll keep you abreast of that as it may get a little bit closer. This is currently your closest battle in the GT3 category right now as Kudashvili gets a good run coming down the front straightaway. That draft really going to help here at this point, but it's a tailwind coming down the front straightaway, which means that the draft is actually going to be less effective, much like that line that we just saw Yuval Merrick make going down into turn one. He got off the mark a little bit there. Now up the hill into turn four. Now this is where the headwind comes into play, folks. And this could be the opportunity where uh, Ketishvili could get a little bit of a run. Could dive that pink machine down to the inside on turn five. Thinks better of it. And stays in line here at the moment. He's going to hold everything out right now as they try to go. Looking to see here with about 10 and a half minutes left on the clock. Kedishvili continues to poke and prod on the back. Looking for a podium position here at this point over Yuval Merrick. There you can see the gap coming down, expanding on the last lap. Though for the battle for the lead, Daniel Lerman and Reem Gross. And look at this, Kedishvili really putting the pressure here as they plunge down the hill into turn 12. Looking into turn 13, I don't think Kenneth Feely has the run here at this point to be able to get this to play. But the battle for P3 in GT3 continuing to contract here. The gap only about three and a half tenths of a second. A little bit over a car length here as they come down the hill here at this point and down into turn 15. Plunging down the hill once more. We saw the 94 get a pretty decent run that last time. We saw an error out of Merrick in front, forcing uh, 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 Kedishvili a little bit closer there as we take a look at your big movers, Lerman and Gross, both up six positions. No real surprise there, your winners from the first race. Look how close Kedishvili, who's up five on the day, is getting to the back here of Yuval Merrick. Can he get a little bit more of a push here as they come off of the corner? This is the closest that he's been. Can he keep it close coming up through turn four? They climb the hill here at this point, getting ready to plunge down once more. Kedishvili carrying a little bit more momentum as they come down the hill here. Not able to get it to play once again, but we're under nine minutes left to go. Time starting to run out. Looking for the crossover is Shalva Kedishvili. Not able to get it to play there. Coming up as they make their way through the left-hander of turn six. Let's see what he's able to do here. Turns eight and nine. No real, seven and eight, rather. No real surprises there. Shalva just keeping that pressure from behind. That battle up the front of the field, maintaining. It looks like Daniel Lerman holding out about an eight, nine, ten. Eh, let's call it a full second advantage here at this point over Reem Gross. This continues to be your closest battle on track. And so we're going to keep our eyes right here as the time continues to tick down. Oh, side-by-side -side battle farther back in the field. At least it was until Mark Zubarev lost the rear end of the car coming down through tur turn 13. That'll throw him around and throw him off a little bit here at this point. Here comes Kedishvili. Is he going to be able to get a good run here right now? Down to the inside they go. Looking to see, looking to see. Here he comes to the outside. Oh, a little bit of a defensive move from Yuval Merrick. I'd almost call that a block, but later on the binders is Kedishvili. Can he get it slowed in time? No, he cannot. He goes to the outside here at this point. Does kind of the responsible thing. Gives that position back up, but he's going to have it all to do yet again with seven and a half minutes left to go.
All right, that gap expanding up to about five-tenths of a second here. Let's take a look at the replay of exactly what happened. Again, I said this was a little bit of a naughty move from Merrick. Little bit of a move in reaction there, depending on what series you're racing in, that could be viewed as a defensive maneuver. But I think there for Kedishvili just overran the corner. And just carried a little bit too much momentum going down into turn one. That threw him off a little bit, and so he's going to have to regather. Meanwhile, we check farther back in the field. This is the number 44 machine, excuse me, farther up in the field. This is Reem Gross trying to close in on Daniel Lerman. Now, credit to Daniel Lerman. He has kept this gap at eight-tenths of a second or greater really over the last three laps. Now, of course, I say that, and it's coming down a little bit more. Call it about six-tenths of a second. Now, it'll hovering at about seven. So it's certainly a little bit closer here as they run, but we'll have to see what they're able to do with it and see if he's able to get anything to play here is there's really not a whole lot of time left on this clock. He's really going to have to put everything together here. Trying to look to the inside. I don't think that's going to play out here for Kenishvili as we take a look at that battle for P3. Oh, oh, now that was a clean move. I would not call that moving in reaction there for Yuval Merrick. Wide run there for Kenishvili. Now, I don't know what the track limits here are on this track. If you can get that off-track penalty for running wide there, but we'll have to see. It doesn't look like Kenishvili has picked up a penalty. Five and a half minutes on the clock, and Kedishvili looking like he's losing time here, but gains it all back up. Kedishvili, it has to be said, much better into the breaking zones over Yuval Merrick. I think Merrick is playing a little bit more of a defensive breaking game, focusing on corner exits here, trying to carry that speed out of the corner rather than maximizing the dive into the corner, and I think that little bit of back and forth there between the two of them is the way to do it. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a creative interpretation of track limits, I would have to say there, if you are Kedishvili. But if he's not getting penalized for it, well, you know, might as well keep going. Now, I, there is going to be a, uh, a limit here, obviously. A, uh, 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 an off-track limit in this series, as I try to take a look at it right now. It does look like... There is no incident limit in this series. So what that does mean is that they're able to abuse those track limits as much as they want to, to their own advantage. And I've got to say, that may seem a little bit here or there for some folks, but, well, uh, uh, race fans, these are racing drivers. And if you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile, and they might as well push for it. Well, let's focus back in on the battle for the lead of the GT3 category. By the way, GT4, yet again, no real contest to Gay Farron uh, up to a six and a half second lead with under five minutes, under four minutes left to go in this race. It's right now, Lerman is able to keep on that advantage, but five tenths of a second. Lap times here at about a minute 45, which should mean that I think we are past the window. So this will be Probably two to go with the line for these drivers would be my guess. So I think if you're Reem Gross, it is now or never time. And this isn't really a race where you had to worry about tire saving. 20 minutes, you can push here. So I think it is full attack mode. And the other thing to keep in mind here for Reem Gross is that's Bertie Galili up in front of him off of Mazus not too far down the road. We've got a little bit of lapped GT4 traffic that we're going to have to deal with. Bertie Galili does the sporting thing, gets out of the way there at that point, gives plenty of room for them all to get out of the way. Oh, and a wiggle there for Daniel Lerman coming down into P into turn 13. Will that open up an opportunity? Does Reem Gross see some breaks in the armor here at this point? Can he start to try to push here on that BMW liveried machine up in front of him? Let's see what Gross has got underneath him. He's been able to bring down lap times the last two times. Wide run there for Gross coming off of the corner. That's really to get out of the way there for Offer Mazus. And now as they cross over the line, it indeed is two laps to go here from the Algarve circuit. Let's see what they are able to do 
Algarf, sorry, my American accent just came out flying there at that penalty. Oh, Carve, I'm never going to hear the end of that one. But nevertheless, here from Portimao, let's stick with that. Two laps to go for Reem Gross to try to close this in here at this point. Pushing ahead, the gap down to three tenths of a second as they go down the back straightaway here into turn five. Mm, thought about a look there, did Reem Gross, but decided not to push his luck. Let's see, though, who's able to get, her, get better traction off of the line here at this point. As they run, doesn't appear to be any issue for Daniel Lerman up in front of him. He's going to keep it all together. Oh, a car spinning in front. I believe that's Ben Yosef, one of the drivers that we were following in that earlier battle in race one. They found themselves in very, very rough times here at this point. Let's see what happened. This looks like a battle with a 34 machine. Oh, contact, and that just spins him right around. That was Aviv Cohen that they got into contact with, the two of them getting spun around, and that was the slow 10 machine of Yuta Hood Ben Yosef. And that uh, put a little bit of a wrench into the work here of Reem Gross's attack. He's now going to have to worry about it. Aviv Cohen, that driver that they saw in uh, uh, problems with one another. Now that's directly up in front of him. Let's see what he is able to do as both drivers taking a very wide approach. As they're going to come across the line, that's going to help Daniel Lerman out a little bit more. He's going to be able to take advantage of the draft. As here comes the white flag. Barney is waving it here at this point. One lap to go from Portimao. Can Reem Gross close down five-tenths of a second on Daniel Lerman and make this play? Let's wait and see. By the way, Keshvili has fallen back to about 1.2 seconds behind. So it looks like, barring an error from Yuval Merrick, this is going to be Keshvili's race two. To lose a close battle though for P. This is, uh, uh, excuse me, P3, the GT4 category. Glad Heskia and Eric Cerniak, they're very close to one another. Now they're coming through uh, turn 14 right now, I believe. Oh, bad run there for the 31 of Zerniak. He's going to lose some time there plunging down the hill. No, excuse me, this is actually going down a little bit farther. This is down into turn 13 now. As we take a look farther back in the field, that is your leader, Daniel Lerman, growing that gap here at this point. He has got a good run on Reem Gross. It doesn't look like Gross is going to be able to close that down. I don't think, barring an error here out of the 32, he is going to find himself in very, very good stead. Six-tenths of a second as they come down through turn 13 right now. Down through the long right-hander of turn 14. Here they go. Into turn 15. One more corner to go here for your leader, Daniel Lerman. It was Gross that took first blood in race one. It's going to be Daniel Lerman that takes the victory here in race two. And they will be tied on points, leaving the session. A very stout defense from Yuval Merrick will hold on to P3. And Shalva Kiddishvili up five positions with a very determined race. Let's check back in on that battle that we were following. This is the battle for the final podium in position in GT4. Sege Farron looks like he's going to run away with that GT4 lead yet again. Brilliant stuff there at that point. Here as they continue to run, let's see what they're able to do. Is that's going to be Heskia bringing the car around right now. Trying to see if he can get anything over Zerniak. I don't believe he can here at this point. Let's see what he can do. 31 down through turn 14. Not looking like he's going to be able to carry a whole lot. No, excuse me, that was turn 13. As he plunges down the hill here at this point into 12 and into 13 now. Oh, they're farther back on the track than I thought. That's turn 10 and 11, excuse me. Uh, there as they go. This is turn 13 for your leader, Hage Farron, up in the lead of the GT4 category. A dominant performance here for the number 95. A fantastic run for Hage. He's going to come across the line right now. Marty waves the checkered flag, and the number 95 takes back-to-back -back victories here from Portimao. Brilliant stuff.
for that Navy, number 95. Meanwhile, a little bit worse for wear there. You can see on Gilad Heskia, but a commanding drive in P2 for Yaron Levi, and it's going to be Cerniak that's going to be able to hold on to P14 overall, P3 in the GT4 category. Heskia comes across the line there in fourth place, not quite able to close that down. But folks, that is the end of the racing action as we take a look there at your final finishing order. As I said, it was Lerman who took P2 in the first race. Well, now it's Lerman that takes P1 in that second race, so that's going to leave them tied on points. A stout defense from Merrick, and Kitschfeely not able to close that down. Tyson Baba rounds out your top five. Michael Scherling, Nadav Yaron, Zubarev on down through there. Near Nave, really the only driver that found themselves in a big, big world of trouble out there today uh, as he finished one lap down. As we switch over on into the GT4 category here at this point, it was a gay Farron that led the way over here in Levi, both of them kind of in a field under themselves. Good battle with Cerniak and Heskia. And everyone else kind of finishing a little bit off the pace there at that point. Yuta Ben Yosef, really tough day out there for the number 10 machine. But that is the end of your GT4 order here at this point. And that indeed is the end of the racing action here today for us. But join us once again on April 1st as we will turn things around and Head on over stateside and race the Watkins Glen International Boot Layout. You're not going to want to miss that, folks. Watkins Glen always produces some of the best racing in the world. And again, that'll be coming at you at April 1st. But until then, on behalf of the whole production team here at OBS, my name is DJ Clark. Thank you so much for joining us here today from the Portamouth Circuit. And until we see you on the track, thanks for watching.